Welcome back to the Woodland Kitchen. Today, Peter and I are out and we're going to be using the Dutch oven. This is my first Dutch oven. I've not cooked on it before outside. So it's an experiment for me and you if you've not used one. So we'll see how it goes. I've seasoned it up. I've done about four coats on it. I got it yesterday and I've been banging it in the oven with some lard and giving it a good seasoning because it came with a anti-rust season on it, but not enough to cook. So we've been doing that and got a fire going I've just lit so I'll get you down and have a look at that and then we'll get this down to coals and we get into some Dutch oven cooking. So the idea is to let this burn down I've just built it I've only lit it about what three minutes ago it's beach so it'd be nice and hot wood and nice hot coals I should say because it's a uh, hardwood. Every time. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the cast iron Dutch oven, which is a 4.3 litre, which is, I don't know what it is in quartz off my head. I'll have to find that out and put the info on the screen. I've seasoned it, like I said, it's, it's not fully seasoned yet. I would say it was good enough to cook with, but it's gonna get better over time. So that's what we're gonna be cooking in. I've got the pole cooker out. Whether I use it fully for the whole cook, I don't know. But for now, I'm going to use it. And in the food bag, let's have a look. It's going to be a lovely, a lovely pot roast. Some of this stuff's prepped, and I'll tell you why it's prepped. It's because I had some of this, I had veg yesterday. And I had so much veg yesterday, I had some left over. So I've just brought it out today. There's the beef joint. It's a large roasting joint. Don't know if you can see that. I'll take a photo. Right, so let's see what else is in the bag. Now this is lardons, bacon lardons. I'm gonna start with these. Give the pan a little bit of a more seasoning as we go. I'm not sure I'm gonna leave them in there or eat them before we actually do the cook. But this isn't bought as lard on, this is bought as streaky bacon and cut up. The reason I cut it up, I didn't know the rind was on it. I, I, it's just fiddly and messy, so I cut it up at home. Because it was, I don't want to eat the rind. I haven't had rind on bacon since I was a kid. I don't eat it then, you should cut it off. So we've got two oxo and a beef oxo stock pot. So they're going to go in with this. Get that other oxo out. I just thought I want in there. Two oxo. The last of my steak seasoning. I know it's finished and I can't find any more. I've been looking for it and I can't see it, so I have to get something different. Italian seasoning to go into the actual um, broth. So that's the food bag. So how are we gonna do it? My first time using the Dutch oven. So I'm with Get out of there, there's flies in my pan. <clears throat> my first time using a Dutch oven. So what I'm thinking is, I've got the pole cooker, I'm gonna hang it on the pole cooker and get some heat, get this bacon lard on in there, get a nice sizzle on these, get these cooked, make a decision on what I'm gonna do with them, because they can come out and they can go back in later when I've, I've see, um, seared the meat, because I've got seared the meat in there as well. Got some olive oil in the bag. So let's get on with it, because I'm just winging it, basically. So I have my pole cooker out, and my pan on it. And there's the coal bed, starting to come down now. Smelling good, sounding good, and it's got four seconds before your hand burns, which is about 180 degrees. Um, 350, I think it's called, in Fahrenheit. So let's get this pan positioned over it. So there's a pot over the fire, heating up slowly. I don't know if this pole cooker is going to hold the weight of this in a bit. It will get lowered though. So I'm going to tip these lardons in. I'm going to find my gloves in a minute. But above this pan shouldn't be too hot. I need some oil in there, I think.
just a little bit of oil to get that bacon starting because I don't want the bacon sticking because it will even though it's a seasoned pan you need to put some oil in it that's still suspended over it's just very close to it I need to stir that in a minute because it will get hot fast. But I'm liking this Dutch oven. Really enjoying the Dutch oven. I think I'm going to be, um, this is obviously I'm close to the car. I'm not far from the car on this site. It's very close to be honest. It's a road just over there because don't forget this thing, you know, it's quite heavy. I think it's four or five kilos or so. So you've got to carry it. But I'm enjoying it. So if you've got to go to a campsite or you've got a car camping, you know, it can't go wrong doing in the garden. But uh, you're not backpacking material stuff. Well, I don't know what this lid is. It won't be hot yet. It's, it's still cold. That bacon's going, look. This all helps season your pan. I'll put a link in description to this pan. It's cheap, let's just say that. It's cast iron, there's no brand names on it, and it's identical to some of the branded stuff. And I paid $18.99 on Amazon. Whereas you could buy identical pan, pans for 45 quid. And it comes with a handle to remove the lid. The heat handle with the spring on it. I'm thinking about getting a bigger one. There's a bigger pot to this, it's about eight litres, eight and a half litres. And if I get that, then I'll do a seasoning video on it and how to season it. Because I didn't do it on this one. I've got a problem with the oven at home, it's not heating up properly, the element needs changing. So I had to put that in so many times to get it to even go semi-seasoned. It just wasn't hot enough. But I'm really, really enjoying this. I'm going to get you down there so you can see. Looking good, eh? Looking good. It's got the little feet on it, so I can stand it over the coals, which I will do later. You can buy ones with flat bottoms for the stove top, but I know I'm going to be outside camp, camp cooking with this. So I went with the feet. The pole cooker, if you haven't seen that before, I'll put a link into that, where you can get one who makes them. They're all handmade. It doesn't just have this, there's more to it. I'll put a video link at the end to the review on it. All right, so this is the handle you get with it. It comes with a pan. You usually have to buy them separately. So a hook under, hopefully a hook under, with, um, yeah, look at that. That's going lovely. And it's not sticking. It's a couple of hot spots. Right that. that flame's a hot spot. You can see it in the pan. Try and put that out by moving it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the lid off and let that dry out because there's a lot of moisture in there. So that's how the lid lifter works. You can lift the lid up as you can see the condensation dropping off that. And that's been seasoned as well. So that's why it's all running off it nicely. So I'm going to take that off place him down see that's the thing I don't like placing stuff down a couple of nice sticks these hot spots it's these sticks burning When I talk about the hot spots, what I mean is it's left a bit of a burn there where that flame was. Drying out fast because it holds its heat, the cast iron, so this will start sizzling soon. 
Oh, and start smelling the bacon. You can really smell that bacon. I like it. That seasoning I've done is, is pretty good actually. It's just going to get better and better. It's a couple of stick spots, but it is where that flame was under it. That's why you've got to be careful with hot flames under your seasoned pans. Gives us time to go and prep the beef because it's still in the packet. That'll go going, get going I should say. What I'm going to do, this is the bag the lardons are in, the bacon. I'm going to cut the meat out of its packet, which is here. Then I'm going to put it in this bag with my seasoning for steak. And give it a good rub about. So let's do that. There's a lot of blood in this one, I don't know if you can see it. Lots of blood in there, so I'm going to drain that first. I know some people say, no, you need to put that in your pan, but I don't know, do I? Because I've got to season it. And I just need to get rid of that, because it's going to go all over me and my table. Christ, it's coming out of there. Oh, it's like a heart. They packed that with blood, I'll tell you why. Probably on the weight, out of order, innit? Selling me a bag of blood. So here's our meat. I'm going to show you it here. I don't want to put it over my table. I'm going to be cutting off this netting. There's a face full of blood for you. I think I'll be pulling the netting off it. Okay, <laughs> blood everywhere. Ooh, and he dropped him. Won't be the first time, eh? Mm. Ooh, he's a big boy. Right, get in that bag. You get in that bag. Let's give you a good rubbing. I should have took the gloves off so I don't get it all over this outside of the bag. I didn't grind this because this is in a grinder, this steak stuff. I couldn't get it to grind out so I cut the top off the grinder and it's quite big pieces now. I'm going to put my hand in there. All this sort of stuff is so easy when you've got tables and you're out and you, or you're at home. You've just got room, haven't you, to do it. It's just when you come out with very little equipment. The fire's back up now, it's flaming again. Alright, this is looking good. This isn't something I probably should be doing, but I am doing it. In fact, I'm going to jack up my pole cooker. That's why I brought a pole cooker. Because I can jack it up. difficult you know to do everything like this and film and move cameras around because I know you're not getting the best of views if I don't do that so all I'm after now is heat which I am getting you can see where the pot is but because my stand isn't supported very well I'm holding it so as you can probably see I'm standing there holding a pole you know I go to any lengths to get a cook going and finish it. I don't abandon cooking. I'm 
mean, if I dropped the pan on that, it'd snuff a lot of the flame out. Probably would be a good idea, actually, thinking out loud. Just give it a go and see what happens, because it should snuff that flame out. Oh, do you hear the sizzle? That got it going, didn't it? That's got it going. I'm only doing this because I want that to be seared. But I know it's, it could damage it, well, it's going to probably burn off my non stick on the other side, which I put on coating of on the bottom of the pan for um, rust protection. Just trying to get a glove back on. Because it's going to be handled. Not that hot to hold and grab, it's only searing it. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there. Someone will shout over, Are you playing with my meat again? And I'll say, Yes, I am. All that season in there, starting to stick to the pan. This is why there's a small fire, you see. I haven't got a massive fire roaring around the edge of this because I won't be able to do it, would I? It's a cooking fire. Once I've um, got this seasoned, this is coming out and the veg is going to go in and get stirred up. When I say seasoned, I mean seared. Get your words right. And where I'm going to put it is on the lid. I'm going to flip the lid over, put it over there. So I'll put the lid over there and then this meat will go on the lid. While this is burning, Searing, searing, it's not burning. Use the right words. I'm going to come over and get the vegetables. Come on. Oh, it smells good. It smells good, sir. getting hot now. Right, this is coming out. And it's gonna go. Ow! Ow! That's hot. That's coming off of there, because that's gonna burn. There's some oil in there. Ow! Come away from the fire. Get the oil in there, because it's burning. Come on. Bacon. Don't let me down, bacon. I'll get this glove off so I can start doing things properly. Sorry? Yeah. I'm getting some sticking because obviously the bacon was always over there. So I'm just going to break it off the bottom. But I'm good with the base. The base is good. It's just I need to mix this in. Now I'm going to throw some veg in there. Get it all really nicely mixed. How much do you think we should put in? Oh yeah, all of it. And we get it stirred that up. Mix that bacon in with it. Peter's making a, well he hasn't, he's boiling water to make a um, stock, got beef stock. That fire's burnt down again, I'm going to have to throw those pieces on that aren't burnt.
I'll try and make a little hole in the middle. I want these um, parsnips, they're a really tough veg. They can go in the base to make a, a little trivet like for the um, meat to go on. Look at that, they fell into place lovely, didn't they? And the carrots. Right, come on, meaty. Get in there. Ooh, you're so lovely. Let's go and make some stock. That can sit there, put the lid back over it. How old are you, lid? Not very. Fire. Let's get something burning on there. Mate, no gloves. I'm an action man. Start picking up some of my mess. Right, let's go make some stock. Ugh. Got to climb over everything. Have you um? Yeah, you're good, Pete. I'm ready now. He's got a good heat there. You? <laughs> I missed it. He left, he had it all burning on an angle and the whole pot fell over. Just as well we brought some extra water up here. I was just about to come over and film that. He's reckless. Let's get some oxos in there too and get a real nice stock coming up. I'm going to get the oxos in here as well. Oh, I'm going to have trouble getting this back over there without it spilling. Jeezy, my table. I've got to get this over there and the camera. Oh dear. Right, this is going to be a laugh. Oh, bollocks. It's gone all over my table. Oh. I've got to get over this now. I think we're just, we're losing all our stock, Peter. It's going everywhere, because you filled it right up. So let's get that back on. Now this is going to go on the fire, but I want some coals. Can you mop up the stuff on the table please, Peter? I need some of these coals on top of it. So I've got a pair of tongs here, which are my normal tongs. We can get some of this up on the top. Right, let's leave it there then. That's a good heat. But now we've got fluid in there. We should be cool because we're going to have, um, it won't damage my pot because of the heat of the, we'll just heat the fluids up now. Is there gravy in there? Yeah, well, there should be enough fluid in there now. Because all that veg has got fluid in it and it's going to reduce anyway. And the meat will. No, I just spilled it everywhere because you filled it up. Went all over the it's table, all over my glove, it went everywhere. Told me it yeah, I said stop, and you just kept on going until it was about a millimetre. What? I did stop. 
yeah when you filled it completely up it's looking good i'll get you down there so you can have a really good look at what's going on down there and here we are dutch oven in action i probably should try and level it because it really isn't level is it let's try and level it it's a bit better Right, I was about 15 minutes in, I decided to turn the pot, then I realised I had no heat at all, because like I say, I've not done this before. I've not had a Dutch oven before and I've not cooked on one before, so I've had to get this fire going. And it's going to have to burn down again, because I want heat now, because I am boiling. So if you just treat this as a pan you'd normally put on a fire, you, did, you need quite a bit of heat to boil the, boil the fluids inside. So get the fire rip roaring let it settle and then I'm going to put two logs which are already up there but I'll put two fresh thick logs across the fire to rest the pan on I don't mind a bit of flame as long as it's not insane you know but this is a lot better now we'll have a better coal bed in there a lot better so it's all trial and error like I say, I've not done it before, I'm not going to get it right first time. Working with real fire and real coals, it's, it's experience and you need to gain it by doing it. Peter's just standing there waiting, he just wants to eat. But we're not ready yet, nothing's, nothing's really changed in that pan since you last saw it. That's 20 minutes ago. So get this fire down get back to you right I've put my pan back on as I got flame because I know that it will die down and it'll go back to coal and I'm on two sticks to support me so we've got a little bit of flame in there because say I'm learning as well I'm going to pull that top off and put some of the Italian seasoning in get the lid off I didn't put any of this in earlier and I do like it that smells lovely it's just cooking times now I mean I can't I can't control anything it's just doing it learning it if you make a mistake you make a mistake just have to re-season the pan the pan ain't gonna melt so you just got to go for it and I had it on the coals, but the coals just weren't hot enough because we've got a bit of a, a wind here and it's not the warmest, it's probably about 9 degrees Celsius so it's just under 50 Fahrenheit but yeah, the flame has died down now I've um, put the pot back on top a few bits sticking out that are burning we'll just see I was going to put coals on top, but I just don't have enough there to pull out and put on top. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it as it is and not coal the top for this one. So we'll see how it goes. I'll get back to you. I'm going to sit here next to it and babysit it. Right, it's only been about two minutes since I last spoke to you. And it's got a boil. I can hear the roll. I can hear a rolling boil. There you go, you can see it with the steam, but that's a rolling boil. I imagine it helps if things boil when they've got liquid in to cook. Like I say, it's my first time and... I don't know, overthinking it, I suppose. At the end of the day, you've got to boil it, haven't you? But i just got this paranoia about burning my pan, but... I think I'm overthinking that as well, to be honest. Because this sounds and looks correct now, it looks good to me. There's always a good sign though, when something's going right and it's cooking correctly, they know and they come and they find you. The dogs of the woods, they always find me when I've got a good cook going on. 
don't know where the owner is. We've had a dog around already. The woman couldn't get control of it. She was shouting at it. And then in the end, she had to track it down, jump on its back, put a lead on it. And then came over and said, should you be having a fire in the woods? Because she can't control her dog. She wants to have a go at us. And I said, well, I am cooking. I'm not burning down things. Oh, look, Motley can smell my dinner. Go on. Go home. Let's have a look in it, because it's steaming its head off. It's, it is running a bit fast, to be honest. Uh, but we're running out of light. So let's lift it off. Oh, it smells good. Let's lift it off and put some extra supports under it. Oh, my eyes. All right. Got a bit of flame now, but it's going to come and go by the look of it. I just don't want it collapsing and tipping over in that, in that fire. That's the last thing we need. But... I don't even know, if, I ain't going to bother turning the meat over. I have got, I bought it specially for this, but I bought a um, meat temperature gauge probe with me. Picked it up cheap in Asda, £1.50. I don't normally use it, but I thought, since I'm making videos and I'm putting them out, if people want to follow me and do this, it's, I can't just say it's done because of what I see it as. Because I know when meat's done when I cut it, but beef isn't such a problem it's when you start doing things like the chicken and that see that pan it just moved that's where the problems could lie is when you start using meats that are bad for you the pork and the chicken so I am going to probe it and I am going to get a temperature reading because I don't want to overcook it I don't want it drying out it won't dry out in that fluid but I just want to do it correctly right I'm going to pull this pot off it's been boiling for about half an hour I want to probe it I've got a probe for the meat so let's just get it off the heat. Put it down here. Put my lid down where it's fairly clean. Where it's semi clean. and then stuff a probe in that and see what it comes to. I feel like I should probe it, because I'm making videos, it's unfair to say that I know when it's cooked, but I don't always know everything. Let's see what this comes up with. Well, we're passing beef. It's on, whatever that is, pig pretty hot in there let's just say that it's, it's succulent I might have gone through it hang on now I'm definitely in it now is that dropping that's cooked I want to cut that and see what that's like I want to test the veg as well but it's only been boiling for about 35 40 minutes my sticks have caught fire now I took it off, look, they were stopping that from happening, that pan was. Let me get a knife. So we're saying we're in uh, in the end of the beef range there. Get you in closer. So we're good. So let's just um, get some cuts into this. It definitely feels hot on that spike. really want to cut into my pan yeah it's probably overcooked 
if you can see that that's definitely cooked super soft that is that potato this is done it did a lot quicker than I thought it was boiling its head off though wasn't it Look at that parsnip super soft and it's getting dark so hopefully you can see it all right the fire's come up again because it's been um, left to its devices right so it's time to serve I believe so we can at least try and get out of here before it gets pitch black there's my chair, I'm going to have to move that. I'm going to come over towards the table, Peter. Look, Peter, he's there with his pan, waiting for it, and I haven't even lifted it from the fireplace yet. Look, a vulture. Yeah, it smells nice. Will you touch my pan this time? No, I won't touch your pan, don't worry, Peter. Kind of it flicked onto the floor, Peter. On that, your move food. So there's Peter's. Cheers. I don't take it, I haven't finished yet. I hope you can see because it's getting dark. We're going to have to take this pot home, Peter, with everything in it, because we're not going to eat all this. Oh, I can manage. I haven't eaten anything today, I'm starving. Yeah, I'm hungry too. Oh, stupid pan. Don't drop that. Again, don't drop it. Yeah, let's fill it up. Then put it on the table and I get it off the table. Don't hand it, mate. Alright, calm down. You saw what happened to my last meal you had in the woods. <laughs> you don't need to dwell on it, there. Get you some yeah. gravy. There's a lot of food there, Peter. So there's our meals. Big bit of beef left. There's quite quite a bit in there actually. Let's have a look. Yeah. So Peter's going to taste test it. Go on, Peter, before it gets too dark. Yeah? What did you yeah, try? A bit, uh, bit of potato. What's the flavour like? Yeah, nice. Yeah? It's a bit smoky. Oh, cast iron for you. Funny if you dropped it now, isn't it? No, I ain't dropping this, mate. This is where it goes all over me now. So you think the wait for the Dutch oven to cook it was worth it? Yeah. I mean, I'll do it quicker next time. It's me. I was too slow on the coals. I had them too low, didn't I? Yeah. The bearded swinger. Yeah, I'm gonna have mine. Right. Well, thanks for sticking by and sticking with us for this long, because it's probably a long video. I haven't edited it yet, obviously. I'm still making it. But it's a trial and error experiment. I'm gonna eat my dinner, go and put the um, fire out, and then we're gonna start packing up and get out of here. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give us a like, a little thumbs up and that. And please drop a comment if you want to say anything. I should give a shout out. I keep on getting asked and I keep on forgetting. A shout out to DR Demon. Cheers, mate, for all your support. And Havoc, I was asked to shout out to. Thanks a lot, mate. And anyone else, I just can't remember. I just, I just don't remember. I should write it down. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one. Bye.